Growing up in Alabama, I can remember as a boy hearing the familiar Bob White call of a quail. But in recent years, that's become more and more rare here, as it has across much of the southern and eastern U.S. Wildlife biologists estimate the number of quail in Alabama peaked around 1900, but they say there were still significant numbers here through the early 70s. A number of factors led to the dramatic decline in quail population, but today hunters, conservationists, and even some farmers are working to reverse that trend. I'd say uh, habitat probably is the, uh, the most critical element, and that's the one you probably need to look at first. Habitat, uh, there are two or three essential elements for good habitat. One of them is you have to have adequate sunlight that hits the ground. And that sunlight causes uh, things to grow that are good for quail. Wildlife biologists believe the loss of habitat is the primary factor in the decline of the quail population. Raymond Shaw and his sons are doing everything they can to restore their land to conditions that promote quail growth. And in order to get that working best, though, you need to disturb the ground. And we do that in several ways, but primarily by burning. We burn all of our quail cores every, uh, every two years. We burn half of it each year. And, uh, and then that disturbs the soil and that encourages the, the type of plants that we want to grow. Another factor that promotes wild quail is predator control. The Shaws trap on their land, but that only controls part of the problem. Other predators can be addressed by again looking at habitat. Snakes are an example of something that gets in the nest. And you say, well, how do you control snakes? Well, you really can't, but, but you, can, you can control the environment that discourages them, like not leaving rotten logs around and that kind of thing. So by giving thought to it, you can come up with ways that discourage predators. Unfortunately for hunters, the Shaw Farm, known as Penthalaco Plantation, doesn't provide fee hunts. Mr. Shaw says only family members can hunt here, and it's a project that's brought them closer together. But it's also one that has not only restored the quail population, but restored their farm as well. We think restoring quail is a conservation project, but making the land look better and be more productive, uh, and, and fixing things that are, are wrong with the land. Lots of this land was uh, farmed years ago and it was left to wash, so we fill in washes and we do lots of things that are designed just to bring the land back to its natural state. Mr. Shaw says his family's putting in all this work because hunting wild quail is far more challenging than the pen-raised birds. Now, although you can't hunt at his place, there are plenty of places available to you in Alabama. You can start your planning by visiting www.alabamaoutfitters.org.